perfectly rated. Um, exactly where it should be. But yeah, so w w what were you talking about with... Uh, let's go. I guess we'll end this with a rant. That's interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess so, yeah. Um, <laughs> girl, if you just want to cut this out, go ahead. <laughs> but so uh, funny to me. I'm fascinated because I show my son a lot of silent films, so I, I feel like a lot of them are appropriate for children to watch. So. Oh, I mean... Sure, Abs absolutely. My son um, loves uh, Charlie Chaplin. He calls him the silly guy. He's like, oh, it's the silly guy. We were, we were actually watching, I'll tell you this. We were actually, wa we've been watching through all the silly symphonies from like the 20s and 30s that Disney was putting out, those little short cartoons before they really, I mean, it was simultaneous with their Mickey Mouse stuff, but it was, it was the earlier stuff. And they did one that is like a polo match and it's like Mickey Mouse and Goofy and Donald and the Big Bad Wolf versus like, all the famous actors at the time and like Charlie Chaplin is in it and um, Harold Lloyd is in it. And like all, oh. of, all of the like comedic actors of the time and, and big actors like Shirley Temple's in it and stuff. It was very weird. I was, I was not expecting that at all. Cause I, I'm just watching those blind. And as soon as Charlie Chaplin showed up in that cartoon in an animated version, my three-year-old was like, Hey, it's a silly guy. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. It was really fun. He loves Charlie Chaplin. We've seen the kid and the circus and the gold rush. Those are the three oh, excellent. Um, I am watching through the AFI Top 100, and the next two are actually Criterion movies. I get a rewatch Nashville, which is a great movie. And then, then it's The Gold Rush. So I'm very hey. excited to finally watch Gold Rush. Um, but no, when it comes to silent Multiple film... Multiple versions of that movie, too. Th that is true. <laughs> that is absolutely the case. Uh, my, my thing with, with the way modern audiences engage with silent films, I find it disappointing. Um, because, and especially the way in which, like the industry engages with its history, I find a little disappointing. Now, I don't want it to necessarily be valorized. Like I could go into it like 20, like the sound era was sort of like how the West was won was by like, in order to sync audio with images, you like there needed to be a regulation of 24 frames a second, just so like, you know, we could sync audio with the video and the, the, sorry, the, the, the film visual component and that, that was able to kind of make directors happy. You know what I mean? Where like you can have your movie shown in a theater and you know, it's not being like shortened by like being played at a super fast frame rate or something. Mm -hmm. So like there was a sort of how the West was one component to the sound era. And I'm not dissing on the sound era. All of my favorite movies are sound films. And, but I like two of my favorite films, like in my top 10 or whatever, two of them are silent films. And, and you know, I this is a great silent film. And um, like I don't know, like so the way I guess what it, what it comes down to is, the, like I look at something like The Artist. Now The Artist is a perfectly adequate movie. I'm not dissing on that movie as a story, but I think it is perfectly emblematic of the way people engage with silent cinema. Have you seen The Artist, DJ? No, that is that one that came out like five years ago. That's all black and white. Is it silent also? <laughs> Try eleven years ago. Whoa, whoa, um, I, years ago? What, what I, I know. Like 2013? 2011. 2011. Um, wow. it, it won best picture of 2011. I did not see it. No. Um, you know, it's often regarded as one of the weaker best picture winners, and it, it is. But like, the thing is, is yeah, that I mean, uh, played old Hollywood, and you you got a good <laughs> chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and the, see, that's the thing is that the way that movie progresses and I'm going to spoil the artist to everybody. So I know I'm everyone gonna, cares. Gonna, you just talk to okay. the camera. I'll be back. <laughs> so, so the way that is, is it's about how the sound era sort of was taking over Hollywood and how, you know, people like Charlie Chaplin and this fictitious character, um, were like these big superstars in the silent era, but then sound came around and you put a lot of actors out of work and it just changed, you know, the industry and, you know, it, it made like a pauper out of a king and so to speak. And, and so that, yeah, that absolutely happened. But what I found frustrating about that movie is the way in which it infantilized just silent filmmaking where when it's a silent movie, <laughs> everyone like is overly expressive and they're acting like live action cartoons uh, as if the close-up doesn't exist. And, um, and it, it's, 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 it's like, okay, yes, that was a style of movie making where you kind of go in for like the vaudeville showmanship. Yes. I'm not saying that didn't exist, but like, it, it seems like people treat like, but the silent era is when movies were just a novelty 
when the sound era came around, that's when you could actually tell substantial stories. Oh. And that's exactly the narrative that the, the artist perpetuates. Oh. The, ending, the, the ending of the artist is legitimately great. It's the one great part of that movie. It's a perfectly fine movie the whole way through. Like I enjoy that movie, but the ending is actually great where um, this man who was a star is now like, he can't get any work. And you know, he, he, his hubris was the downfall of him. He thought this you know, sound was just a fad or whatever. And then at the end, he, you know, the, this girl that he was in a movie with one time, now she's become a sound era, like starlet and she's a big star. And she kind of says, hey, why, why don't you get to be in this musical I'm in? And so he goes with her and they do like a big number together. And then sound comes into the, into the movie and you hear someone say, all right, cut. That was great. And then the Frenchman says, oh, thank you. And you realize that the actor you've been watching this whole time is French. And the reason he wasn't um, a star in the sound era is because people have a bias against people who don't sound like them. Hmm. And it's a really cool ending. The problem is the movie couldn't make that point without being a sound film. And you could have made it that same point with being a, with being a silent film. And I feel like it, it inadvertently infantil, or maybe it is, is like uh, conscious of it, but it, it, it infantilizes silent cinema. Like you watch Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans, or you watch a Charlie Chaplin film, or you watch Metropolis, or you watch Nosferatu, you watch these iconic movies. They weren't novelties for those storytellers. They were putting their heart and soul and using the form to tell really great stories. And yeah, a lot of them painted in broad strokes, but I, I dare someone to show me a more nuanced portrayal uh, uh, of like love than like um, uh, Sunrise. Like that movie is so smart in the way it uses genre conventions that weren't even conventions yet. And it uses expressionism and it uses subtle acting and it uses just actors faces in a way that sound films that most sound films couldn't dream of doing and and it just disappoints me that even when i watch something like the passion of joan of arc people are just not going to watch this because it's silent and they've been conditioned to think well it's a novelty it's not actually substantial because it's not in sound and that disappoints me so i just want to just call to action people give the silent era a shot and because for me, and I, I know other people don't have this, for me, when I'm watching a good silent movie, I forget it's a silent movie. I forget movies aren't like this all the time when I'm watching it. And I, I think a lot of people will have that experience if they just gave it a shot. Anyways, rant over. That's that's just my message. <laughs> no, it's, it's exactly the same thing as foreign films, man. Like, And they go hand in hand. Like if you watch a lot of foreign films, you get used to reading subtitles, then a silent film is no problem because you're used to reading the dialogue anyway. And you can, it's a little awkward that it's not happening on the screen. Um, But I mean, you get used to that really quick. I mean, sub intertitles are not, are not hard to read, but no, I I mean, I, I I totally agree with you. I, uh, I didn't know that that was kind of a perception that was going around. Like, I mean, I know a lot of people can't watch silent films, but I, Figured that's just the same kind of people who can't even watch black and white films. Um, I didn't know that it was like even there was another layer of of people that that specifically didn't like um, silent films. But but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think they are incredible. Like I said, I think the kid, even though it is a Charlie Chaplin film and it is hilarious, um, made me tear up watching it with my son. Good grief, that movie is very emotional. And this movie is a, is a prime example of what you can do uh, in the medium and. He had no, he had no, he was, he made no bones about it. This is like the perfect version of this, of this film. I don't think he would have, like, we, we even said this off camera when we talked about Vampire. It seems like a silent movie because he doesn't even use a lot of dialogue, like, very much at all in that film. Well, and I, I actually do consider Vampire to be a silent movie because it's made like a silent movie. Like, it has a dialogue, but the dialogue is in the soundtrack. It's not like it's, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's in the soundtrack audio like yeah, it's, yeah. it's well, not it's, really it's, like it's made after we had sound film that that that, that is true that he, is true he yeah. just yeah. like he didn't need it he, he, that's how he wanted to tell the story like i feel like people should be able to do that nowadays i don't feel like if you want to make the artist i don't feel like it has to be like a big event but yeah anyway um what, what are we talking about um <laughs> the passion of joan of arc fantastic movie definitely check it out